A History Report of Terry Barrett by Violeta Lerma. Terry Barrett was born on January 31st, 1945, while his dad was in the Battle of the Bulge in Belgium during World War II. He grew up one hour west of Chicago, Illinois, along with four siblings in a neighborhood without many other children his age. As a child, Barrett found activities to entertain himself, such as building forts and climbing trees outdoors. Terry Barrett attended Holy Trinity grade school, where he studied religion, penmanship, and reading during his early years of life. When Barrett was only 13 years of age, he decided to join a seminary to study to become a priest. During his seven monastic years, he spent two in Ireland, where he said, I lived a life of reflection, study, and meditation immersed in the beauty of Gregorian chant. When Barrett returned from Ireland, he went on to Webster College, a progressive Catholic school for women in St. Louis that had recently turned co-ed. Barrett attended Webster College during the Vietnam anti-war era and at the height of the civil rights movement. In the evenings, he returned to the monastery where he attended an evening prayer after his school studies. Once prayers were finished, he would sometimes slip out into the night to drink and experience the nightlife. He later decided that the monastic life was not for him and continued to study art and philosophy. Terry Barrett earned a bachelor's degree in art and philosophy in 1967 from Webster College in St. Louis, Missouri. He wanted to be a professional artist, but graduated at the height of the Vietnam War and was likely to be drafted. Barrett was opposed to the war and learned that anyone who was a teacher would not be drafted. A former college teacher came to his aid and found him a teaching job. With no background in education, no coursework, or any student teaching experience, Terry Barrett started working as an art teacher at a black public high school in St. Louis in 1968, just one year after the Detroit race riots and the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This first te teaching position posed a challenge for Barrett in a school with only three white teachers and about 2,000 black students. He built good relationships with his students and taught modern art with the inclusion of works from black artists that focused on black pride. He would continue teaching for the next five years, cycling through another school district. Because of his background in photography, one school district hired him to prepare educational slideshows for teachers. This would lead to him accepting a position as an art professor of photographic media in art education at Ohio State University in 1972. A few years later, Barrett earned a master's degree in art education while working as a professor at Ohio State University. In 1974, he wrote his thesis titled Toward Critical Discourse About Photographs, specializing in ways to critique photography. He later earned his PhD in art education from Ohio State University and wrote his dissertation on art criticism of photography theory titled A Conceptual Framework for understanding photographs in 1983. During this process, he learned that he loved to write and started publishing articles, stating, I thought I could contribute more by writing than I could by making more pictures. Terry Barrett has written a total of nine books, which include Interpreting Art, Reflection, Writing, and Responding. Why is that art? Aesthetics and Criticism of Contemporary Art, and Crits, a student manual. Interpreting Art, Reflection, Wondering, and Responding is a great introductory book for beginning a journey in interpreting art and is easy to understand. In a testimony included in the book, art professor Timothy Van Lahr describes why is that art, aesthetics, and criticism of contemporary art as a book that offers art students a lucid, comprehensive description of the various philosophical approaches to Western art and their relevance to contemporary art, and uses different art examples and responses to each work. This book is issue, issued 
sorry, this book is used for teaching in some art studio courses, as I also used this book in one of my undergraduate courses. Crits, a student manual, is a book designed for students to make art critiques a more positive experience, no matter if you are a beginner art student or advanced because of its suggested tools for, tech, for effective communication. Critz is Barrett's most recent work where he reflects on his whole career working at different schools, guiding the critique process and writes about the skills and attitudes needed for a positive critique. Terry Barrett has also had over 50 articles sorry, over 50 article publications in various education and art journals. Barrett has presented all around the world as a guest speaker and guest professor in lectures and workshops and led art critiques at various institutions such as schools, universities, museums, senior community centers, and assisted living homes. His career is, as an educator expands through different levels of education covering all ages from preschool through universities, all the while guiding the critique process and leading discussions. As an artist, Barrett exhibited his art photography in over 30 solo and group exhibits between the years 1973 through 1981. He also served on various university committees and also worked as a visiting professor at schools such as the University of Arizona and the University of Oregon. Terry Barrett is now a professor emeritus, em, emeritus at Ohio State University, where he spent most of his career living with his wife, Susan Michael Barrett in Florida. While Terry Barrett was working on his master's degree, he was teaching a photography class from 1972 through 1974. In this class, Barrett started discussing the images that students made, and he thought that the critique process was a bit awkward because he wasn't sure what questions to ask, and students were not, were not sure uh, what type of answers to give. Since he loved photography so much, he wanted his students to be able to express themselves through photography and be able to look at the images and interpret them. This is how Barrett started to look at photography criticism. He wanted to learn more about it and how to do it. He did some research on famous photographers that were teaching and found that they were having the same problem. They couldn't get people to talk about photographs. Furthering his readings on the issues and concerns of teaching methods in photography led to his motivation to continue doing research and art criticism due to the lack of information available. Terry Barrett read work by Manuel Barkham, Vincent Lanier, Edmund Fellman, Elliot Eisner, Laura Chap Chapman, and June King McPhee. Barrett states that after reading these esteemed educators, I began taking our education more seriously because I began to envision how powerful it could be. He also started to look at esthetician uh, Morris Waits on analyzing Shakespeare's Hamlet's criticism by others. Waits' conclusion was that criticism describes, interprets, judges, and theorizes and that these are not done in any particular order. And Barrett realized that judging art was neither necessary nor a sufficient condition for criticism. We don't have to judge everything we see. Terry Barrett believes that art is very important. Art offers ways to look at the world that other disciplines don't. It's different than science, it's different than literature, and I think it's important that we consider carefully what art, what art does and how it can affect us. He wants people to enjoy art, but also wants people to think about how art affects their own lives. 
As a teacher and professor, his goal is to build students' confidence through arts therapeutic potential to help students feel better about themselves. He feels that it is important for him to help people and believes that teaching is a great way to contribute to society. The elements and principles of design are not a great way to initiate our interpretation. Instead, Terry Barrett asks questions about the artwork itself and the subject matter of the artwork. What is the artwork expressing? In other words, so what, so what if there's only one color being used in a painting? Instead, he wants to know what the color can tell you about the effect of the painting. As an example, we can take the principle of design balance and ask, is a painting balance? Does balance in the artwork make it better or worse? Does it make it more boring or interesting? And so how does balance make a difference in a painting? How does this help us interpret the artwork? We need to place an emphasis on the questions about the meanings of the artwork itself to avoid trivialism. Theories that stand out to Terry Barrett are those, are the ones that affect his life or his personal life. Some of these influences include philosophers such as the existentialist John Paul Sartre, uh, Friedrich Nietzsche, and pragmatist John Dewey because of their attitudes and beliefs. In summary, existentialism is not reliant on the, on the metaphysical or scientific, but instead looks inward. We are born without a destiny. Therefore, Sartre uh, states that the human being is condemned to be free and bear the responsibility of making choices. In education, existential philosophy aims to cultivate in students an awareness of that they are free agents responsible for creating their own lives and purposes. Dewey's pragmatic perspective uh, views, views art as a part of being human and that in order for art to be art, it needs to be experienced by others in some form. Dewey discusses aesthetics extensively, which means experiencing art and taking from it what is valuable to you. In order for art to be art, art requires people to be receptive and not passive. Edmund Feldman's model of art criticism is useful and has influenced a lot of people. Feldman's model of art criticism starts with describing the work of art, then an analyzing the art, followed by interpreting and lastly judging the artwork in that order. Terry Barrett feels that the order of Melman's model is good, but a little unnatural in its rigidity and can become boring and repetitive. He has tried different models of art criticism with his own students, but tries to avoid favoring a particular style. Barrett, um, Barrett himself has not written his own model of art criticism because he feels that with time, it can become too simplified and reductionist and instead abides by multiple guidelines and with what the students or audience is saying. His goal is to keep everyone engaged during critiques. In his view, if students or participants are doing most of the talking instead of him, then it is a successful critique. So what should art criticism, what should the art criticism process look like? For Terry Barrett, art criticism does not need to have a specific order. For teachers leading an art critique, it is important to think about the questions you are going to ask. Asking what do you think is not a very good question because it is too broad. You want to avoid asking negative questions. Instead, you want to work with the positive things that the artwork has to offer. Always make sure to give students or participants time to think about the question and formulate the, their answers before moving on. Barrett believes that artwork is important for sparking discussion. When selecting artwork for discussion, especially for beginners, 
It is sometimes beneficial to select the artwork of professional current artists because it is less intimidating to talk about than the work of classmates. Oftentimes, people don't want to hurt other people's feelings. So selecting artwork that does not belong to anyone in the critique discussion process can be helpful. When looking at art, sorry, when looking at professional artwork with kids, Brett asks them, what do you see? What's it about? And what does it mean to your life? They can feel more comfortable with these questions because they know they are not going to hurt their friends' feelings. When, criti when criticizing art, your students do not necessarily always need to know the background of the artwork. You don't need to know when the artwork was made, who painted it, or historical background about the time in which the art was made. Because you are looking at a picture. We are all human beings. It was made by a human being, and we can talk about it. Starting with an understanding of an artwork with a level baseline of humankind provides an equal playing field to expand discussion and opinions. When he leads a discussion, Barrett chooses to share minimal information only within the realm of name, age, and location. Sometimes he might not know much about the artwork uh, background he is showing. Doing some research about the artist, however, can help to guide the discussion and help design the questions for the art critique. A successful discussion or critique is when the students are leading the conversation so that it does not simply turn into a lecture by the teacher. <laughs> what happens if an artwork is controversial? It's fine to talk about it. If the artwork is offensive to some people, it is still important to share ideas as to why someone might feel the artwork is offensive. Uncomfortable feelings are valid and important, which can aid in the interpretation of the artwork. One way to start a conversation like this is to have people write anonymously and honestly about the artwork. Before you read the responses out loud, ensure that the environment is safe to do so. And most will find out that each person has a different point of view. And Barrett found that through this process, people learned that their views are not always shared by everyone else. Chapter eight, principles of, in of interpreting art from the book, Interpreting Art, Reflecting, Wondering, and Responding. Terry Barrett lists excellent guidelines for interpreting artwork or any other item uh, or text. Remember um, that these do not necessarily have to be in any particular order and are great guidelines to help anyone make uh, meaning of artistic objects and events that seem to shift as we gaze at them and change as we reflect upon them. Some of these guidelines are the objects of interpretation are artworks, not artists. Artworks are always about something and some interpretations are better than others. In conclusion, Dr. Terry Barrett has made a big contribution to art education, specifically in the field of art criticism and interpretation. His influential books are used in many art education college courses, and he himself has made a difference by mentoring future art teachers in the area of art criticism. Dr. Barrett has created inclusive art criticism guidelines that are useful to all people, including beginners in helping them interpret art and make art meaningful and accessible to them. His guidelines aid hopeful artists and art enthusiasts alike to interpret work in an engaging manner, stripping away any intimidating and pompous notions that art is only reserved for a select few and can only be seen through a controlled lens. Barrett's legacy has provided fellow educators with an encouraging directive in artwork selection and questioning format to produce significant and expansive critiques. 
The branches of his work continue now and provide for a more relatable and understanding view of our peers as we share our thoughts through his impactful work. As those branches of our education grow, Brett's lasting impression will be there to keep the art world open to all, to anyone who has desire to see beyond the canvas. For more information, you can visit Terry Barrett's uh, website at terrybarrettosu.com. Thank you.